everyone. So today, something very exciting is happening, and that is I am heading down to the Proven Winners headquarters. Now, it's actually in DeKalb, Illinois, which is just about an hour outside of the city. So it's not that far at all, which is really exciting. It also makes traveling easier since we got snow yesterday. I'm looking out the window. There's a little bit of snowfall right now, and I think it's supposed to pick up. So hopefully, traveling goes as smoothly as possible. But basically a few weeks ago, I got a message on Instagram and it was from an account that was private with no profile picture and only a few followers. And it said, um, this is so-and-so from Proven Winners. We'd like to invite you to a creators event that we're having. And I was super excited, but then part of me was also like, is this a real account? I really hope so because I would really love to go to this and it was so yeah that's what's happening i think tonight when everyone gets in there's just a dinner where you kind of meet everybody and then tomorrow we're on site at the proven winners offices basically all day um, i think we're just kind of sharing ideas talking about what we do um, talking to proven winners about i think maybe some new plans that are coming out i'm not 100 percent sure and i don't know how much i'm going to be able to if anything like actually film there but I'd figure even if I can't film anything on site while we're there, I can at least put a video together and kind of talk about what we've learned, which I asked the Proven Winners team and they said that was A-OK. -okay. So that is my plan if I can't film anything actually there. It's just kind of giving you a summary of everything that happened. Also, there's about 15 to 20 gardeners that were invited, or at least that are going, and almost all of them I followed for many, many years. So I'm really excited to meet people that I've just kind of known from the internet. Um, some of them I've messaged before, some of them I haven't, but everybody that I've ever met in the gardening world has already been really nice. So I'm really excited to go ahead and kind of meet everybody in person. I also feel really grateful to be invited because I feel like I'm still such a newbie, at least compared to a lot of other gardeners. I mean, again, this is like my fourth actual year. So I do feel really grateful that like they saw me and recognized me and thought that it was worth inviting me. So that is really exciting. Thank you, Proven Winners. I think I'm gonna head out now in just about an hour. Um, and then I will try to check in with you later today. But if not, I will check in with you tomorrow. So I made it down to DeKalb. The drive was pretty easy despite the snow, but the roads were clear. It is not the best weather that I would want to be traveling in. Still cold outside, so staying inside now until uh, dinner at six in a couple hours. So nothing major to report so far. This is actually the first time I've been back to DeKalb since I was here in high school for a show choir competition. So it's fun to be back. So behind me here, you see a little over 600, 650 barrels. Ultimately, this building has storage capacity for about 1,400 uh, when it's full. Uh, on the property currently, we have right around 1,500 uh, barrels that are in storage, that are aging. We lose 5% of it when we fill it. That soaks into the wood, that's called the devil's cut. Good morning, everyone. So last night was the meet and greet and I got to meet a lot of gardeners that I've been following for a long time. And the trend has continued. Of I feel like the gardening community being full of really nice people because I'm always a little nervous to kind of go into a crowd of people I don't know and hopefully find people to talk to. And it was really easy and people were really welcoming. So I think it was about maybe half and half um, of online gardeners and the other half of people that work with proven winners. Um, so that was really cool to meet a lot of people that I've seen their faces and their names and know all about their lives but never actually met in person. And the meet and greet itself was at Whiskey Acres Distillery, I think was the name of it. It was really cool. I'm not a huge whiskey drinker, that's more of something that my husband enjoys, um, but we not only got to kind of eat and mingle there but they gave us a tour around their distillery. So I think everything that they make they grow so they grow their own corn they make their own whiskey with the corn that they grow and everything happens on site so that was really cool just to see that something like that is happening you know pretty close by um now we are headed to the all day kind of round table creators meeting at the actual proven winners headquarters so we haven't been to their offices yet that is what is happening today um i did get some footage a little bit i think of the tour itself from the distillery so i'll put that in here i don't think there's going to be a lot of opportunity to film like again at the proven winners offices because i think a lot of it is going to be 
discussions. Um, but if there is stuff that I can film, I will try to do that. If not, I'll kind of just give you another update uh, later on during the day, either today or tomorrow. So yeah, I'm excited to go back and just have a full day of talking about plants. is there is colors that are not available, available in petunias. Orange, for instance. Yellows aren't very good. Some of these bicolors colors aren't even available. And also as, a, as gardening changed, one of the problems that petunias had is they got leggy, right? And your flowers were only at the bottoms of the pots. You know? And growing in containers, People, you know, think that, you know, container gardening is revolutionary. Yes, it is, but what we missed was the consumer said, I'm pulling the pot out of the ground because I'm no longer planting in the ground, and now I have containers. And that changed the type of plants that we actually had to provide. And so petunias weren't always the best, and we had to work on breeding petunias that worked well in containers. So here's our 20 varieties. We got all these different colors. We make sure that all of these varieties are unique and different. That was the main thing. You got splotches, you got different colors, you got different patterns, you got whites, you got pinks, you got reds on top of yellows, and you got all these different types of colors. So these are all designer type colors. It's a collection that's unique and different. Doing some other fun things with the glass. These have that vintage glass look and they come in all these colors. And so these are a really great item. A lower price point than our bowls, a little smaller and uh, add a nice pop of color to your home. Perfect, like I've got them all over my home on all the shelves and basically every room. This one's my new favorite in terms of the glass items. It's an angled globe uh, and in there we have an Alocasia Regina. I don't know if that's actually the name or just the name we got from the breeder, but that one is a trial at this time, gorgeous plant. Um, but this essentially is a kit that fits and marries perfectly with the entire Aquapot's light line. And there's a line of colors. Um, there's also the, the lava stone line, like I said. Um, but the beauty of the kits is that the kits will also be sold just as kits themselves. So if somebody has planters that they totally love, like if this planter right here, granted this is, this is an Aquapot, but if somebody had that as a normal ceramic pot, right? They could simply buy the Aquapots kit, place it down in there. The fill tube is now expandable. Um, so this guy can go down into this planter. If this were a planter that you know your grandmother or something gave you and you absolutely loved and you had a couple of them, you can get a couple of Aquapots inserts. Now you fill this baby up with soil, pushing your soil down into this soil <coughs> core here. And this is essentially your wick, right? This whole big core. This reservoir right here um, fills up with water in a pouring rain or anything like that. It's still going to, you know, gravity, God forbid, is always going to still work. It's going to fill up with water. But when it is full, all of these flutes on the side are your overflows, right? So when this fills up with water, it can never clog or anything. It's got all these different overflow channels that go down. And then these feet are integrated into the bottom. So even if it goes into a pot and it goes all the way, all the way down to the bottom, it's always held up off of the bottom a little bit. And so the water can escape out of those channels and drain out just like your grandma's pots always drain. Hello, so I am no longer at the Proven Winners event. As you can tell, I'm back home. We've been home now for a couple days. It kind of like digested everything, had some things I wanted to do, had to get some work done, obviously. And now I thought it would be good to kind of summarize how the event went and it was really, really cool. So as you can see, I was able to take video of some of the presentations that were happening. I did ask and they said, yes, we're not telling you anything that you can't share with everyone else. So that was really great. And basically here's kind of how the day went. So Wednesday night was the meal at Whiskey Acres, kind of getting to know everybody. Then Thursday, we headed into their office and it was much more of a structured day. So we did a photo shoot first thing in the morning, which was really fun. Um, and then we were each at 
individual tables kind of in the presentation room. Um, and I got to sit by Grow For Me 5B. In fact, I will list down everyone who was there below. So I was with Eric at the table and then two people that worked for Proven Winners. And that was kind of how I think it was set up where you were at a table with somebody else who was kind of a social media gardener and then a couple people from either Proven Winners or the growers that they work with. And it was really fun. And again, every single person I talked to was incredibly kind. So that was really great. And then the day was broken up into presentations. And I actually meant to bring up the agenda to kind of summarize it and I forgot. So here is what I remember. Um, they went over the annuals and each part of the presentation was a little bit of backstory about kind of what they do, like how they grow them, where they come from, all the standards that are put in place, which I had no idea. Um, and then they went into what's coming new for 2023. So we talked about annuals, there was a presentation on the shrubs, um, and there was a presentation on perennials. And each of those was done by someone from the grower of where all of the plants come from. So let me kind of back up a little bit and talk about the structure of proven winners, because this was something I learned part of at the Grand Garden Show and part of more information about it at the event. I didn't realize how small of a company proven winners was. So it was at the Grand Garden Show, and I think they said there's like maybe somewhere between 15 to 20 employees total. And I think that might include contractors. So like what's considered proven winners employees. And I think just because I knew the brand name so well and see it everywhere, I assumed it was this huge company with offices all over. And that's when I first found out there was an office in DeKalb. And I was like, that is super close for me. Um, so that was something I learned at the Grand Garden Show and then learned more about the structure at the event. So basically, you know, you have proven winners and then they partner with the growers. So they have growers for the annuals, growers for the perennials, for the shrubs, for the house plants, for the cladiums. Um, so learning all about those different businesses and the partnership and again, everything the businesses go through uh, to create the best quality plants was really interesting. I like to learn the kind of behind the scenes stuff. Um, so yeah, we had shrubs, perennials, annuals, presentation, a whole talk on cladiums. I've had some cladiums in my garden before, but never a ton. And there are a bunch of pretty ones coming out. So I'm excited to try potentially some of those in my garden. Um, definitely in pots around the garden in some of the like shadier places, I think would work really nice. And then we had a whole houseplant talk. And that was really cool too, because I learned a little bit about the houseplants. I think the houseplant branch of Proven Winners is new like a year or two old, I might be getting some of these details wrong, um, but we learned a little bit about kind of what they had going on at the Grand Garden Show, but then we got a whole presentation about the house plants. So that was really cool. Um, there was a person there who works on their social media uh, that gave a presentation and that was really cool. And then what else did we do? Oh, then we went into the warehouse area at Saul the huge wall filled of aqua pots and then Jack Barnwell was there and he talked about, so they have the heavy pots with the system kind of built into them, I think. And then now they're creating a line of lighter weight pots and then also kits that are separate that you can put into a pot that you already have. Uh, so I know for me, like the original aqua pots, I think those are way too heavy for me to carry up here, but with the lighter pots, those work really nicely on a rooftop deck and then also being able to put an aqua pot into a pot that you already have because I definitely have a ton of pots up here. And then we also had a presentation on augers. Twist and Play, I think, is the brand of the augers that, uh, again, Proven Winners has partnered with another company in Illinois that makes those. And that's really cool because I actually had an auger from Amazon in my cart that I'm going to assume was really poor quality. Now with my container garden, it's not like I need an auger up here, but what I was gonna use it for is um, downstairs in the parkway. There's a lot of like roots in the grass or the ground is harder there. So I think using an auger to plant my bulbs when I move the tulips down would be fantastic. Um, so we did get to take some stuff home with us from the event. Uh, two, I got two little tater tot bushes. A lot of people were flying, so they didn't take their plants. So I got two. Um, they're sitting outside right now. And then I got this, I think it's a Calathea. I'm not as good at identifying house plants. Um, but again, it seems like a lot of the Prune Winter house plants are in these little glass globes. And I've never been able to keep a Calathea alive. So I'm hoping in something like this, where I don't have to water it, that won't be a problem. Um, and then I think 
They're also sending us like a water bottle, an auger, and some other things in the mail. So I'm not 100% sure. I'll show you all that stuff once it comes in, but it was really great to meet the team, realize that it really does feel like a small family company. Cause again, that was not at all what I was expecting. Um, and Marshall, who was the, I think the MC of the Grand Garden show was kind of the MC of the event. The event was really great. It's the first time they've done this. It was incredibly smooth. Like I was impressed. And I also remember thinking, because, you know, I would travel to conferences and stuff for work and there were some sessions where like you're interested in some sessions that are kind of boring. But I remember thinking near the end of the day, like, oh, I actually am really interested in all of these sessions and I can't help but pay attention to everything everyone is saying. So it was just a really great experience overall. Now, I figured since a lot of the emphasis of the presentation is on what's coming in 2023, um, I would share with you some of my favorite ones they mentioned. So they did, you know, their slides for presentations. There were a lot of images of the plants. I wrote down the ones that I liked. And then I'll also throw up images on the screen so that you can actually see what they look like. Um, so the first one that I wrote down was a romance mulberry Nemesia. I think I've been saying Nemesia, but it's Nemesia, or it might be the other way around. Either way, that was one of the things I realized when they were going through it that I have been pronouncing that wrong. Um, then there was the double coated echinacea, specifically the raspberry beret, and these had like fluffy little centers on the flowers, and I really like the look of those. Um, Summerific Lilac Crush Hibiscus. I don't, no, I think I did have a hibiscus plant, but it was like 2017, so before I had a garden, and before we had like an outdoor space where I could garden, and I think I tried to keep it as a house plant. I don't know, either way, I didn't know how to take care of that hibiscus plant, and it died very quickly. Um, but this one, and so kind of going with like how I didn't love the elephant ear in my garden, um, I don't know if I would love a lot of hibiscus because they look again more tropical to me, but this one had really pretty colors of the flowers. So that's why I wrote that one down. Um, the pufferfish hydrangea, which looks absolutely beautiful. I hope that's something that would work in a container because I would like to try that out. Um, do, 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 where's my favorite one? Rise Up Lilac Days Rosa. That's a rose plant. Again, I think I really liked the lilac colors of the flowers. They were really pretty. I'm trying to find my favorite one because I know which one it is, but I don't know if I wrote it down. Okay, I found my favorite. I had to pull up this little catalog that they gave us. Not a catalog, but just describes all the plants in it. Um, so the one that's my favorite is I think the one that I have in the clip in this video um, from the annuals presentation, but it's the Super Bells Prism Pink Lemonade Calabrocoa because, well, one, I like pink flowers, I like yellow flowers, and this is a combination of both. I also love pink lemonade in general, and I thought that's the perfect name for this plant. So that was the one that I think immediately when I saw it, I was like, ooh, that is my absolute favorite of what I've seen so far. Now back to the ones I wrote down. Um, also had Midnight Sun Wigella. This is another one that I'm like, am I pronouncing that correctly? But I think that's how it's pronounced. But the leaves on that one were really pretty. And I think, that is everything I wrote down that stood out to me in the presentations. Now, I don't know if Proven Winners is going to send us plants. I think they're going to. So we'll kind of see how that goes. So I don't know if they're like planning to send us some of these newer plants and then we can put them in the garden. If not, I will try to find them at like stores I know that carry Proven Winners. If you're close in Chicago to where I am, here's where I've gotten Proven Winners before, Home Depot. They don't seem to have as many Proven Winners plants as some of the other like actual garden centers. Um, but I have seen Proven Winners and bought Proven Winners at the Home Depot closest to me. Uh, the Chesterton Feed and Garden Center, so back in my hometown, Chesterton, Indiana. Uh, they have a lot of Proven Winners, so we'll go back there. We always go back there around Mother's Day. I make a trip to the garden center and grab all the Proven Winners Super Tunias I can find. Um, I've also gotten them from Chalet Nursery, which is in a Chicago suburb. So I think that's the three main areas I get them from. Um, but I know that obviously other garden centers have them, but I know not all of them do. So it's kind of difficult sometimes to find the Proven Winners plants, but that's where I have gotten them 
in Chicago. So that is everything from the event. Well, not everything. I know there's a bunch more that happened that is all like lost in my brain right now and I'm forgetting it as I'm sitting here talking to you guys. But if you have any questions about anything from the event, plants, anything at all about proven winners, let me know down below and I can answer those there. I still feel incredibly honored to have been invited and like part of me is still like, am I going to wake up and realize that this was all a dream? I certainly hope not, but it was a really, really cool experience. And again, everyone I met from everyone that worked at Proven Winners, their partners, all the other gardeners that were there were so nice. It's always odd kind of walking into a place where you know no one and you just hope that everyone's friendly and everyone really was. So yeah, it was an incredible opportunity. I'm so excited. I'm still, I feel like, riding a high of proven winners and plants and all of that. So yeah, it was really great. Um, like I said, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Oh, did I mention I'm gonna link everyone that was there down below? I'm gonna link all of the other people on social media that were at the event down below so that you can go and give them a follow. So thank you, bye.